Hey there, it's Meredith. I'm back with another episode of Vibe with Velo. Today, we're going to look at an intro to the Wix real-time API. This is a highly requested topic, so I thought we'd start from the beginning and get an introduction onto how the Wix real-time API works. We're going to understand the fundamentals of how this API communicates, where you put, need to put your different code pieces, what a payload and a message look like, and how to handle those messages being sent and received across your application. You can think of real-time API as many different applicable use cases like push notifications. So instead of users having to wait for an update about information and pulling that information from you, you can send it to them if they're subscribed. You can also think of this as a useful use case in building any sort of chat or multi-user functionality where users are able to communicate with each other, share in a game together, for example, or be able to chat with each other. The Real-Time API has so many different applications and can really help take your website to the next level if implemented correctly. However, it can be kind of difficult to troubleshoot because you're sending and receiving messages that are being out there into the interwebs, and if you're not receiving them properly, they're just going to continue to float in that interwebs space. So without further ado, let's dive into an example to see how the Real-Time API works. In my real-time example here that I have set up, I have a subscription event with my sign up button, and then I have a image that we're gonna show or hide based off if a message was received or not. The first thing that we need to do is in the front end of our code, so let's look at our page code and pull up our page code, is we wanna import the real-time API. This is how we get the basic functionality like the onConnected, and the listener for when a message is published. What we'll do is when our button here, our sign up button is clicked, let's go ahead and find our on click function. We're gonna subscribe to the channel. Now in this case, a channel just needs at the very bare minimum, a name as I've just defined up here as a global constant for my application. So this channel is gonna be called new alert. This also allows you to have multiple active subscriptions going on that where users can subscribe to different channels in your application. We're going to focus on a single channel subscription here, but if you have a more complicated example, you can use more channels as well. So users only will get messages through certain channels. So our channel that we're subscribed to here is our new alert channel. And the second, the second parameter in this function is going to be the event handler. So this is waiting and listening for an event to be published on the new alert channel. And once an event is published on the new alert channel, it's going to handle that message. So in this case, we could verify that we're getting a message from the correct channel, look at the message payload and use it to display some information on the screen. Maybe if it's like a new news article came up, we could get the payload and it has the article's title so we could populate and update a repeater, for example. In this case, we're just getting a new alert. So we know that we can just use that to show that new image that we currently have hidden. So if the message has a payload, we're going to go ahead and show the new alert. Once we've subscribed, we can then, since this is an asynchronous function, we can then get a little bit information about our subscription, like the inform like the subscription ID, for example. You might want to keep track of these in your database so you can know how many users are subscribed to your channel at any time. Because again, we're sending messages and they're kind of just going out in to the, the interwebs. <laughs> Um, so if you don't keep track of how many subscription IDs you currently have, there's no way of knowing how many users are currently subscribed to your system. So this is useful information for keeping track of those subscriptions. And then if someone ever chooses to unsubscribe, so maybe disable those push notifications or leave a chat, you can then remove them from the database where you're storing everyone who is currently subscribed to your channel. In this case, we're just going to use it to disable the button because once we're subscribed, we don't need to continue to subscribe. We are always going to be subscribed. 
Now, one thing I do have here as well is I have an on disconnected. So what we can do is if we ever get a ping that the real time connection was lost, we can re-enable that sign up button to allow a user to resubscribe to that channel. So this enables them to get those alerts again if they want to, because the connections can get lost. This is, can happen if your computer goes to sleep, for example, and again, that subs subscription ID isn't maintained, where you can automatically reestablish any of those alerts. Now, this is what we need to do in our UI here. On the back end, we need to actually have something that can send messages out. So on the back end, I have this realtime.jsw file. In here, we're going to access the real-time backend API. So there are different APIs for backend versus front end when it comes to real time. Only in the back end can we publish messages. You cannot publish messages from the UI of your application. So in this case, we'll create a new message and we're going to again send it to that new alert channel. So we'll define the channel and we'll define the message. The message is going to be in JSON format and we're going to give it a message with a value so that we can parse out that information in the payload that is sent to the front end of our application. Once we have those components built, we can use the real time backend dot publish function to send the channel that we want to send this message to and then the message that we want to send. So again, this is where we can have multi channels in our application where if someone has subscribed to news alerts, they, we only want to send this to the news channel. Um, if someone has subscribed to notification alerts, we only send to the notifications channel. So if you have multiple subscriptions available on your application, you need to define which channel to send that alert over to. Now, in order to test this, because I don't actually have this connected to any data, what I have is back on our UI. I have a little secret button down here to do my testing because who doesn't love testing in production? And so our message test button, when we click it, it'll just send a message. So it's going to call, which is why we have um, back up here, the send message imported from the back end. So it's just going to call that back end function to send a message out to our system. We can go ahead and publish this and view our site. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and sign up for subscriptions. I did console log this information too. So if I want to check the console, we can see that it's subscribed. So that's great success there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this message test. And what this should do is publish that new message that we defined in our back end and our handler in the front end should show that new um, image on our UI here. So we can see that it's new. We can see the payload of what was published. So we can see that message is in there as well. So it's really easy to send that message. Now, you may not believe that everything can do this. So let me go ahead and grab this URL, open up an incognito window. And let's go ahead and have a second one here. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this, which should kill the connection. Oops. Go ahead and sign up. Grab this one. Sign up as well. So now both of these are subscribed to it. And I'm going to click the message on this one. And we can see that both windows are getting that new alert because they are both subscribed to this service, even though I didn't press the button on our, the back window here. So you can see that this message is being sent across the entire network and ending up with all of the current running subscriptions of our application. So that's the basics of how the real time API works. As you can see, it can get really complicated really quickly, and it's important to keep track of all of your subscriptions and all of your channels that you currently have running. 
Now, this was a example where we used a button to force that test message, but you can do this based off of data hooks. So if a new data gets inserted into a database that you want to push out to, to your users, such as a new chat message was received or a new article was inserted into your blog's database, things of this sort. So it's more data driven. So in the more complicated examples that we'll look at in the coming Vibe with Fellow videos, we'll see how we can use data driven events to trigger these notifications across your real time channels. Until next time, I'll see you guys.